panel today. Um, starting from left to right, we have Chair of Flagler County Commissioners, Commissioner Donald O'Brien. <laughs> Town of Beverly Beach, Mayor Stephen Emmett. <laughs> City of Pinnell, Mayor Catherine Robinson. <laughs> City of Flagler Beach, Mayor Linda Preventure. <laughs> and City of Concord, Mayor Melissa Holland. <laughs> All right, now the, now the important stuff, how it's going to go down today. <laughs> All right, so each official will be given three minutes to introduce themselves and their respective mu municipality. <laughs> Big words. If you would like to ask a question, please use the forms on your table. Does everyone see these forms on their table? Yay! Okay, awesome. Um, so please write your question on that table. Raise your hand. We have Chris and Eddie. Can you guys stand up really quick so they can see who you are? They are our question gatherers. They have a very important role today. So they will gather your question. Um, and if your question is not answered, a response will be sent to you by email if you provide your email at the bottom of your question. All right. At this time, we will start with the chair of Flagler County Commissioners, Commissioner Donald O'Brien. Tell us about yourself. Um, <coughs> well, uh, thank you, Megan. I uh, sure appreciate uh, uh, the opportunity to be here this morning, and thank you to the realtors and, and, and everyone for attending. Um, it, it's an honor for me to be here with, with the rest of my uh, uh, counterparts for, from the municipalities. Um, as you know, it's been a pretty tumultuous year in Flagler County from Flagler County government standpoint. Uh, you know, we've been dealing with a lot of challenges, some of them self-inflicted, some of them victims of circumstance, but nonetheless, uh, working through a lot of things. Probably the most important thing I think that we accomplished this year was actually uh, uh, starting to turn over our uh, administrative staff. We hired a new uh, county administrator. Uh, there's there's a, a new sense of energy and direction uh, at the county, and I think that's all, all for the good. Um, We've, uh, I think, dealt with some major challenges like uh, dealing with uh, our uh, issues at Bing's Landing uh, and Captain's Barbecue. I think we have a solution there. Uh, we solved a long-term issue with respect to uh, the Sheriff's Operations Center uh, with a new building uh, going to come at the library property in Palm Coast. Uh, we're still working on the short-term issue, and I think we're getting very close to hopefully getting that resolved here uh, soon as well. Um, Hopefully we're out of the, uh, the uh, building, the uh, real estate or building buying business uh, going forward uh, in the county. Uh, and I think we're, we've uh, also fixed some of those problems as well. Some good things uh, going on. We, we uh, finished up the, uh, uh, the first phase of our uh, dune restoration project, which is basically from North County Line down to Beverly Beach. Uh, we did that under budget and, and on time. Uh, it was originally slated for $28 million. It came in right around $20 million with a lot of different funding sources. And we actually are using that leftover money to help uh, some of the local match that's required for the Army Corps project that we're going to be undertaking in Flagler Beach. So that was a good thing. Uh, we have other things going on, such as uh, Bay Drive Park. Uh, and the whole Malacompa drainage system is, is being worked on up in the north part of the county. Um, the new 800 megahertz radio system, which is the emergency radio system, is, uh, is uh, <coughs> coming to fruition with the purchase of the equipment and, and new towers going up around the county. Uh, and that, that's an important thing. Our emergency operations center has been redesigned. Uh, so that we can actually uh, accommodate more folks in there with the same amount of space, new furniture. Uh, we've got new software that drives that process, which allows us to have better cooperation with, uh, with all the municipalities. Um, and uh, we announced Monday the signing of our agreement with the Army Corps to undertake the, uh, the beach renourishment project in Flagler Beach. That's 2.6 miles running from South 6th down to 28th Street, I believe. Uh, I think that's important. Uh, and then on the budget side, um, uh, the, our projection at this point is that we would actually be coming in with a millage rate that's 10 mils less than, than last year's number, or the current year's number. Um, by state definition, that's still considered to be a tax increase, but it is a lower millage rate, uh, so I think there's a positive sign there as well. And probably the thing that I'm most proud of is the fact that we, I, I feel that there is a renewed spirit of cooperation 
uh, with the municipalities throughout the county. I'm very proud to serve uh, with everybody on this panel and, and their respective commissions and my commissioners. And I think uh, with, the, with some of the, the new administration, administration, administrative people uh, on, um, on duty now, the, the new city manager, our, our county administrator, there's a new spirit of cooperation, and I think that's for the betterment of, of our county as a whole. Awesome. Thank you, Megan. Uh, uh, before you pass the microphone on, can you introduce any of your commissioners that you have with you today? Uh, I think I saw Commissioner Mullins was here. Um, he was here. Commissioner Mullins, I guess he's not here. I do see we have the sheriff in the back there, so uh, Sheriff Stelly, welcome. Lord, Lord knows Sheriff does not work for me. He's, as you know, he's not a person, but he's a county official. Thank so you very much for that. All right. All right. Thank you. Good answer. Mm -hmm. Questions after. Answer questions afterwards. That's when the tough part comes. <laughs> yeah, right? Good. Good morning. My name is Steve Emmett. I'm the mayor of a small town in Beverly Beach, which sets approximately three miles from the traffic light in the center of Flagler Beach on A1A. We're a small town. I always like to give a little history of our town. <clears throat> the town was formed back in 1955 to 1956. It was chartered at that time, and it was done by a prominent attorney within the county by the name of Claude Barn. You've heard of Barn Park. Uh, I'm not sure if you're aware, but the bridge that crosses over up in Matanzas, that name of that bridge is Claude Barn Bridge. And then we're a small town, we're a mile and two tenths long, probably a tenth of a mile wide, and we're subject to hurricanes and floods. <laughs> um, <clears throat> it's, uh, we have five commissioners, five P&Z board members, code enforcement officer, the mayor, town clerk, town attorney. So we operate like a regular town. The, uh, <clears throat> when I just lost my train of thought, it's coming with age. Um, <laughs> The, mm -hmm. the town is sets directly on the ocean. Probably our one crime to fame is the fact that we are the only municipality town hall that sets directly, and I mean directly on the ocean. If you threw a stone, you'd hit the surf, you know. Um, we did suffer under the last two hurricanes, Matthew and Irma. We had about 20, 30 homes in Surfside States, which was the manufactured home park, got lost. Probably a total of over 40 homes total that had to be fixed and replaced. Uh, we're a small town. We know everybody. Everybody knows us. Uh, very non-political. There was one thing I was trying to think of that was important. Now I can't remember. It, right? <laughs> um, let me see. Let me think some more. Anyways, everything's very quiet over there. We've really grown in the last few years. We've really grown out over there. I think it was uh, you mentioned yesterday that driving down A1A uh, in Beverly Beach, you didn't recognize it because there were so many homes built up now. Yeah. Our budget for the year is usually around $280,000, which is nothing compared to the rest of these people. Uh, our property value in Ver uh, Beverly Beach is $78 million and a mile and two tenths and a tenth mile wide. So. It's a nice place to live. We call it paradise. We call it hidden paradise. Sometimes we're glad when people just keep driving right on through. <laughs> the, uh, the, we're, we're growing out to the point where our, we're almost an outgrowth. And uh, we have a few homes over there that still could be built. We have some uh, commercial properties at the north end of the town that can be developed. Uh, we have some commercial properties in the, in the center of the town. Excuse me, I got this away from me. Anyways, I'm glad to be here, glad to meet you, I know a lot of you, okay? I've been the mayor and I've lost count, believe it or not, I think 15 years, something like that. And uh, that's the part of being in a small town. They like you, they keep you, okay? <laughs> that's all I have to say, and it was nice talking to you this morning. Good morning, uh, my name is Katherine Robinson, and I'm the mayor of the city of Benel. I think I've been the mayor 11 years. I've been on the board 24 years, so it's been a lifetime. I woke up one day and went, what happened to my life? And my children said, what happened to your life? Um, 
I love to go over to Beverly Beach because the ocean view is astounding when you go over there. So it'd be a real distraction if I weren't there all the time because it is so pretty. <clears throat> so what's happening in the now? Well, we had uh, our city manager left in May, and we had an interim city manager who was our chief of police, Tom Foster. And he was able to rally the troops and actually present a bad, uh, balanced budget to us last year which I thought was a phenomenal event considering. And in October, we hired a new city manager, um, uh, Dr. Jackson, and he's come on board with new thoughts and new ideas. We have a new vision and a new mission. And so he's big about economic development and he's working towards that goal. Um, I'm sure y'all know that we are the second largest city in the state of Florida. We've got a lot of birds and trees and dirt. And um, of course, that's property value. Property value um, in our city. So we always talk about the tale of two cities, the core city of four miles square, and then the larger component of all the property that's been annexed into the city uh, over the years with ranchers and farmers and those kinds of things. Um, we had a meeting in December once um, Mr. Jackson got here October 1st called the advance. He says he, everybody else calls it retreats, but he called it an advance because we're moving forward, not backwards. And so we had an all-day meeting and we looked very honestly at our infrastructure and uh, water and wastewater and all those things that cities need to do and came up with um, some six priorities for the city. Increase in economic base, financial stability and sustainability, quality of life, organizational excellence, technology, and infrastructure. We have developed a strategic plan. It just came out at Monday night's meeting, so we'll be working our budget around our strategic plan. And so I want to give a little plug to St. John's Water Management. They have been wonderful friends to the city of Manel. Um, we don't have a lot of uh, large amounts of property to help us with our tax base as far as the knowledge, not like this houses up and down A1A um, where the taxes are, are very high because the value is very high. And so St. John's Water Management has come in with some grants that's really helped us to be able to do some things that we need to do in the city. Um, and that's real important for us. Monday night we set our millage rate at 6.43. And we will start our budget hearings, or not hearings, but workshops, um, this coming Monday night. So we will be plowing through our budget. And of course, you know that we can't go any higher than that because we've said it, we may can go lower. We just don't know yet what that's going to look like. Um, let's see. We've had an increased number of building permits this year. Certainly, Grand Reserve Phase 1 uh, is almost a full build-out, and Phase 2 is coming. Um, they have, are in the process of building an amenity center in uh, Grand Reserve. Some of the folks in Grand Reserve came to our meeting Monday night, and I guess the rumor, you know, rumors are alive and well in Flagler County, and they came because they heard we were going to de-annex them and turn them into their own township. <laughs> I told them that's illegal. <laughs> and that we're happy they're there and we welcome them to the city of Vanilla, so we're not going to turn them away. And so they were happy and went home. <laughs> but one of them stood up and said, what are you going to do about my taxes? I don't know, I haven't got there yet. We're working on it. And he said, well, you know, you can't get anything accomplished when you come to these meetings. They don't tell you anything. <laughs> we're working on it. So it was, was kind of interesting. Um, let's say the, we, there is an expansion of the Carver Gym um, property, and that's the county that I'm working on that. It's been approved by PZA, so we're well working on that process, or the county's working on that process. 3100 Steel Rail Drive uh, has a site plan approved for 6,000 square foot office and tractor trailer storage yard. There's two developments going in there. Um, Porch Light Project has stalled. That is the 240-unit apartment complex that was slated for Moody Boulevard. We're hoping that will continue. Uh, I think they're working on their financing, so we're just waiting for them to get their ducks in a row and come on in and let's build these apartment complexes because you know we need that. And let's see what else. Oh, yes. <clears throat> Partnership with the county. There was a building built uh, on US-1 and Otis Stone Road and Otis Stone Hunter Road, and that's called the US-1 Business Park. That has been done, 
and it's available for rentals. So those of you who do commercial rentals, that's a great location. It's right on US-1, and we'd love to see that building occupied. So with that, I'm going to pass over to the Mayor of Flagler Beach. Good morning, thank you for coming out. Um, I have two of my commissioners here, Commissioner Jane Mealy and Commissioner Marshall Shoup. I believe that's the only two. Uh, first off, I wanna thank the Association of Realtors. You showed up in masses for our beach cleanup on July 5th. And if anybody's been to the beach cleanup on July 5th, <laughs> It's quite an undertaking, but the past two years we've partnered with Palm Coast and the Flagler Beaches. Last year we uh, handed out koozies with garbage bags in them. This year we handed out metal straws with your own brush for cleaning it, and with the garbage bags, and we had volunteers all during the 4th of July handing these out. We handed out close to a thousand. So the good news is people actually use the orange garbage bags that we hung, you know, passed out. So it's much easier to clean the beach when everything's in the garbage bags and not all over the beach. So I really want to thank you guys for coming out. Uh, I was pleasantly surprised when I showed up early that morning and realtors were already out there cleaning the beach. So thank you for that. Um, we have some exciting things going on in Flagler Beach. As Commissioner O'Brien mentioned, we just partnered for the Army Corps project, which will start next year some point after the road construction is done. <laughs> so right when we get the road back open, we're going to have the restoration project, but it's something that needs to be done. Fortunately, we're not gonna have any more hurricanes, so I don't know why we're worrying about the road and the beach, but in the meantime, you know, we've been working on that Army Corps project for I think 18 years. So it's been a long time coming. Uh, the A1A project is going well. I think they're about halfway through, so hopefully November the road will be open completely. Uh, if you go up to the north end, they've gotten the seawall in, so and a lot of that heavy equipment has been moved, so that's a good sign. Uh, to the only, well, one of the downsides of the construction is a lot of those businesses along there have been suffering. So what we've done is we've tried to come together through different organizations and help them out. Scenic Highway A1A Committee has been doing these pop-up businesses uh, every couple weeks. They pick a restaurant or a business and they let them know ahead of time so you don't just get inundated with 50 people showing up at your restaurant to eat. But we advertise it and make the business owner aware and then everybody shows up and eats there. Um, buys their product, and it's been great, especially for those smaller businesses. There's businesses there that people said, I didn't even know that place existed. So it's a great way to advertise for our businesses, to help them out during this. Um, social media is another big way to do it. I've never been one of those people to take pictures of my food and post it on social media. <laughs> However, they tell me that's what you need to do. So when you go into one of these restaurants, check in, take a picture, post the picture. And I've really, I've gotten comments from all over, not just Flagler County, but people that live outside of Flagler County that might follow me on Facebook or Instagram. And they're like, wow, what a great place. I would love to come there next time I'm in town. So. This is all free advertising we can do to help those businesses and hopefully they make it through this construction. Um, some of our challenges, we have our budget coming up. Uh, like everyone else, you know, it's kind of a backward system because you have to go ahead and decide your mill rate without seeing your budget. I have not seen our budget. I don't know what our city manager and staff is proposing. But once you set it, you can only go down, you can't go up. We've had two hurricanes in the past few years, so we've got a lot of projects that were kind of kicked down the road. Infrastructure is a big one. Um, we have a lot of new homes, which is great, but with new homes means more services. We're always challenged every year because we have lifeguards which a lot of the other cities don't have. I don't think any of you do. <laughs> we also have our own police, our own fire, our own sanitation, and I'm not complaining because most residents like all, to have all their services in-house. However, it does put strain on the taxpayers. 
the county does give us some money towards our lifeguards and beach, but the more people that come, the more services that are needed. So it's kind of a catch-22. Um, the good news is we've had 38 new homes in the past year. Wow. We have one commercial uh, building, new construction coming, Sherwin-Williams, which will be coming next to CVS. Wow. Yeah, exciting. <laughs> um, we have 446 LBTRs, so we have quite a few businesses in town, especially restaurants. I've given up counting how many we have. We just had two new ones open in the past couple weeks, so I've always said you'll never go hungry in Flagler Beach. You could eat out three times a day, seven days a week, and not hit all of them, so there's definitely something for everybody. And a lot of these are you know, family-owned or mom-and-pop restaurants, so it's very important that we go out and support them, especially through this construction phase. Um, the good news is, you know, all of us, believe it or not, get along. We just had a meeting yesterday. We have quarterly meetings and we can sit around and vent or tell each other what's going on in our cities or ask advice or if we need support on something. So it's great to have a wonderful working relationship with all the people sitting up here. And Leslie from Marineland, who unfortunately isn't here today, but we, like I said, all get together and share ideas and support each other. And it's wonderful now, I guess my city manager's been there the longest, he's been there four years, but you know, uh, you have a new city manager, you have a new city manager, we have a new county administrator, and all I can tell you is what a change, it's been amazing. Uh, my city manager, Larry Newsom, can't say enough good things about the other city managers and the county administrator, and they're meeting monthly now for lunch, they're talking, they're supporting each other, so, it's great to have that going on in Flagler County, that we're all working together. <coughs> so thank you guys very much. And I'm going to pass this on now to Commissioner Holland. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for inviting us here today. Um, I always uh, say this is my third year. Uh, actually, I, when I was county commissioner, I was here often, uh, but as mayor. Um, and so uh, it's exciting for me to present what's going on in our city. Um, many of you um, are on the front line of, of growth, and, and you can certainly understand uh, that we are seeing growth again, which is, which is a good thing. We're, we're about 90,000 residents now. Um, so uh, we are a, a large community. We're a large city. Uh, we have gone through some organizational changes uh, as of late. Uh, we have a brand new city manager, uh, Matt Morton. Matt brings a lot of energy, a brand new perspective uh, to our community. Um, we also had some major organizational changes uh, within our city government. Uh, we have a brand new um, communication director, actually Michael Shoddy, he's here with us today. Um, and so Michael will be developing some strategies on how to best communicate um, our initiatives, what's going on in our community. We want to hear from the residents. We, we want to make sure that um, we are arming you with as much information as possible. Uh, that way the engagement that we're looking for from not only our realtors from res residents, uh, it, it's important to us. Uh, we have a brand new um, community development director. Uh, many of you may know Jason DiLorenzo uh, comes from a uh, different background, uh, one of um, advocacy on behalf of the Home Builders Association. He also served on the city council. Uh, Jason comes with a wealth of knowledge and understanding of um, some of the things that were broken. Uh, in, in our community. My first 30 years as mayor, I can tell you, I heard loud and clear uh, that the city was not as business friendly as one would hope. Um, that has now changed. Uh, Jason will be bringing that umbrella to our organization. So we will have one stop shop of permitting. Um, no more silos occurring in our city uh, hall, which is really important to us. Uh, a lot more friendly of, of an experience, and um, he's working closely with Ray Tyner, who has a lot more of the technical applications. Uh, they make a great team, a lot new renewed energy there. We have a brand new Parks and Rec Director, uh, Lauren Johnston. Um, Lauren's been in the community for many years. Uh, she's young. Uh, again, I go back to that renewed energy, that renewed focus. Um, much more friendly experience dealing with our organizations uh, than we've had in the past. Um, and, uh, you know, we're, we're excited to have Lauren uh, as part of our team. Um, so communications, 
Parks and Rec, we have a brand new public works director that's starting in September. We have a brand new IT director, uh, Doug Akins. Doug was in the city already. Uh, he got elevated to his new position. He's a very, very talented, smart young man. We always say Doug has like five kids. I think he has his kids doing half the work because he just works all the time. Um, but he is an extraordinary gift to our community. Um, and, and he'll be focusing on some initiatives that we're launching with different um, citizen engagement platforms. Um, and then we have a brand new fiber director um, focusing on our fiber initiatives that I'll talk a little bit about um, in, in a few minutes. So I think I've covered everyone from an organizational standpoint, if I'm not. Um, again, a lot of changes. Uh, have been made, um, but but Matt, again, really wanted a brand new, fresh perspective brought uh, into our city government, uh, one that feels that connection with our residents that may not have occurred for many years in our city. So I think you're gonna see a big shift and a big change, and we're excited about that. Um, speaking of um, that citizen engagement platform, we just launched, Palm Coast Connect. I would encourage everyone to go online and sign up for Palm Coast Connect. Uh, it is on a Salesforce platform. The great thing about it is um, you can go out and any one of our trails or our parks or um, you know just be out in the community. If you notice something, you can take your cell phone, upload a picture um, saying you know there's there's a crack here uh, in your sidewalk. Uh, it, it goes right into the system. It logs a case. Uh, that case now um, becomes an open case. It's signed to somebody. And, and you are communicated by um, email or text messaging, updating you as that case progresses. What's great about that is obviously uh, it's great citizen experience. Uh, what, what was occurring was we had about 10,400 calls a month into our um, call center. And when I would ask questions like, what is the volume of calls, you know, from a data perspective, I don't think we were really making really good decisions based on what the citizens uh, we're calling for or about. Um, so this arms us internally with a lot more knowledge that now we can focus on different priorities that are meaningful to our residents, um, ones that we can spend their taxpayer dollars a lot more, more wisely with. Uh, so please, it's very easy to use, I promise. Uh, I call it the Amazon of the world, right? You always know where your package is with Amazon. Now you're always gonna know where your case is. And we're also gonna know how responsive we are um, as department heads when it's assigned to. So we will have that information, it's real-time data, um, that we can literally now say, okay, it took us 60 days to resolve a permitting question or a utility question or could be a stormwater issue. Um, so it goes across all departments and it's assigned the to the correct department. So Palm Coast Connect, uh, please go on and register um, and, and share it certainly with your clients. Um, it's a great way, again, to promote the, the citizen engagement with our community. Uh, fiber, uh, we are one of four cities in the state of Florida that owns our own fiber. We're one of 110 in, in the country. Um, we, we made that decision some time uh, ago, way before I was mayor. It was a really uh, cost-saving measure uh, for the city council. We were paying a lot um, to Bright House uh, on an annual basis, um, about $400,000 a year annually just to run uh, Wi-Fi to our facilities. Um, so the city uh, council made the decision to invest in that. It is not only paid for itself, it saves over $400,000 a year in Wi-Fi connections, and today it generates $600,000 annually with our business relationships. Um, and so we are creating a public-private partnership. Um, we are not going to be the management arm. Uh, we are going to be the infrastructure arm. Uh, so we had uh, created an RFP. We had five responses. Our new fiber director is going over them now um, and analyzing what that relationship will be like. So you can be out there telling your clients as well that we do have fiber, a backbone that runs through our city. Uh, that's great for economic development initiatives. That's a great way uh, to acknowledge um, the city's focus and the areas. Um, so speaking of that, our downtown, our town center is left sort of empty for many years. Um, the downturn of the economy shifted dramatically. The infrastructure was put in. And then Amazon did come on the scene, right? So we knew that brick and mortar had shifted a little bit as well. The commercial real estate market had changed. Shopping habits had changed. 
So we created a brand new vision. Elite Energy owns um, the majority of parcels back in our downtown. Um, uh, they hired a new management company, um, uh, Douglas Development, and Jeff Douglas came on the scene with a burst of, of fire in him and, and really tried to um, initiate a brand new conversation. So within that, we hired a brand new innovation um, uh, director to drive our innovation district. So our downtown is not only in a CRA, it's an innovation district, it's a DRI, it's a CDD, but it's also now a designated opportunity zone. Um, so opportunity zones were created by the federal government as a way um, to reinvest in your community um, with capital gains. Um, much more on the residential component side, we're seeing a lot more of um, those investors taking advantage of um, different types of housing complexes that want to take advantage of those tax increment um, initiatives. Um, so we're working um, uh, collaboratively to make sure we're getting that message out there on market that it is an opportunity zone uh, to create that investment in our downtown. Uh, we'll be hosting our first hackathon, um, the first part of next year in our downtown. For those that don't know what a hackathon is, it's a competitive challenge uh, by those in the technology industry that, that really go into communities and want to compete to solve problems. It's, it's a glorified community problem solving um, event. Uh, it's normally attended by over 200 um, uh, people that participate, come from all over the world to come into our community. We will be focusing on healthcare um, and we are working closely with Advent Health that's going to develop some of the problems that these competitors will take on. There will be a cash prize. Um, Advent Health is also sponsoring that event. Um, and so we're very excited about our hackathon. It creates a lot more energy and participation in our downtown. Um, we are working closely um, to uh, focus on our downtown within our innovation district. One of the things that we know is a void in our community is a university presence. Um, so we are working closely to drive that discussion to bring a university to our downtown. Uh, you're gonna hear more about that hopefully in the upcoming months. Um, so medical technology and innovation is our focus area in our downtown. All these initiatives will drive those sort of companies that want to be located in our downtown. Those are high paying jobs, those are clean jobs, there's ones that um, really create that diversity, uh, that walkability, um, and, and we're excited about that as well. Cell phone coverage. We uh, contracted with Diamond Communications some time ago um, to create more cell phone coverage in our city. Um, not only is it a safety issue for people in their homes that don't have that coverage, but you know, again, if you're trying to work out of your homes, um, if you're just driving, uh, not having that cell phone coverage is really critical for a lot of reasons. Um, Diamond Communications has now built two towers. We are uh, they are working closely with the providers. Um, to be housed on those towers, so you're going to see a lot more coverage in the upcoming um, years. Street lights, we've renewed our focus on adding additional street lights. Um, we've come up with a, a study, uh, so we've put them um, all on uh, Lakeside Drive, is uh, a lot of the street lights. Um, next, you're going to see Beltaire is going to be lined with street lights as well. Um, that's a very dark area. So we focus on areas of safety first and foremost. Uh, we prioritize those areas. Um, so you're going to see continued uh, renewed focus on street lights, sidewalks. We have 125 miles of connected sidewalks and pump coast. We continue to build on our infrastructure. We also have a brand new stormwater plan uh, utilizing um, our relationship with the Water Management District to utilize uh, the latest technology of LIDAR. Uh, LIDAR takes advantage of topography in our community with the two storms that we've had occur in our city. Uh, we needed to make sure where we need to prioritize our funding. Uh, so we will be um, talking about cleaning out ditches, canals that will help the stormwater flow a lot better in front of your homes. Um, and we will have a maintenance plan um, for your actual swales in front of your house. And we'll be using our technology to communicate when that's going to happen. So you will know when your street is going to be maintained and cleaned out um, because we'll have a master plan to be able to identify that. And the last thing I just want to mention real quick, we have a Shop Local campaign. Uh, Shop Local allows us to take local sales tax dollars, support our local businesses, 
Um, but the revenue that we generate in Palm Coast, we utilize that for capital improvements. Um, so we built, uh, expanded on your brand new community center. We paid cash for it. We did not go into debt um, with those shop local dollars. So every time you go to St. Augustine or you're going to Ormond and giving them your money, the mayor's calling me and saying thank you because your, your community just gave us dollars to improve our community. Um, shopping local means you can fuel up locally, support our local restaurants. Every single dime that we spend here locally comes back to us. We're able to do Holland Park renovation paying cash. Um, you know, the city of Palm Coast does not have any municipal debt, um, and we're, we're able to do that with those dollars. So I'm encouraging everybody to make sure that we are shopping local. Tell your friends, tell your organizations, tell your neighbors, tell your clients. It means something to the business community. It means something to your local governments. The money stays here, and we're able to keep your taxes as low as possible and maximize those opportunities. So I want to thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to update you on the wonderful city of Palm Coast today, and I look forward to your questions. Thank you. Now. <laughs> all right, so <coughs> now the fun part. I'm going to start by telling all five of you that I love you and I didn't write any of these questions. <laughs> also, I think it's something very important that um, I gather. Yeah, raise your hand if you have a question and they're going to, Eddie and Chris are coming around and grab them. Um, when I was chatting with uh, this group this morning, uh, one thing that really struck me was, uh, and I think Linda did mention it, is that they said they love working together, and they love when they get together for their quarterly meeting. And I think that's very evident by all of the things that were stated up here. Um, you can really tell that change is being made, and it's being made positively in our community. And I just think we need to acknowledge that, that that's really Thank awesome. You. All right, question number one. With the buyout available for Flagler County homes damaged during Hurricane Irma and in risk areas, what is the county doing to make the properties available? Second part, the owner, does the owner have choices to accept it? So I don't know who wants to. <laughs> I have no idea what that means. Yeah. Does anyone know what that means? No. Okay. I don't know who asked this question. So. <laughs> Next slide. All right. When can we expect the final results from the CDC concerning the Sheriff's Operations Center, and when was the last time the county contacted the CDC? Um, I don't know when we're when the final report uh, will be here. I know that uh, we are in contact with them on a regular basis. I don't know whether that's every week or every month. Uh, uh, we have had regular updates from. From the administrator and from the attorney as to where we stand on that and uh, at this point you know we're not going to go at least from my you know i'm one of five but i'm not gonna make a, a hasty decision on a, on a uh, six seven eight million dollar building until we have all the facts and if the building can possibly be mitigated it'll be mitigated if not then we'll have to take other action but uh, you know that that's where the building stands at this point. awesome thank you um this is directed to the town of Beverly Beach, but I think everyone can kind of chime in on this one. Uh, what is what is your town doing to attract families? And are there currently any family fun activities in place there? Oh, wow. That's a good question. <laughs> the families in Beverly Beach are very minute. I think we probably got a total of six children in the town. <laughs> okay. So there's a lot of activities because there's HOAs and associations, and of course we got the beach and uh, handicap walk over down to the beach. It, uh, we go along with the rest of the town, and they got events to, to get people over to their events and whatnot. But um, <clears throat> it's senior citizen community, basically. Okay, so. You know, when you get older, you slow down, you buy a golf cart, and, and that's pretty much what goes on over there, okay? Um, does anyone else want to chime in for um, <coughs> what they're doing to attract families? And I, I know that we do have a lot of a lot of fun stuff going on. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, I mean, I, I will tell you, I think Palm Coast, obviously, it's evolving, um, and we know that. But but I do think that we're a multi-generational community. We're always going to be a multi-generational community, uh, one that attracts what we call active retirees. Uh, these are retirees that like their amenities. They like their golf courses. They like their tennis courts. They, they like to really be outside. Um, but we also have 14,000 students in our school district. Um, so we do have young families here that we need to really understand what they're looking for and what they want to experience. Holland Park was a big renovation. It, it obviously took a few years. Um, but uh, it, it's open and phase two is going in now. So you'll have a splash pad that's going in by next summer. Um, and so and you will have some toddler park areas as well. Um, so I am in the school district all the time speaking to students. It's one of my favorite things to do. I like to hear from what you know the, the young people and the young families really do want uh, to experience. So um, we have uh, Indian Trail Sports Complex that frankly is utilized very heavily. Um, Mad Dog Spot Football uh, is a brand new organization that we're very excited to be partnering with. Um, we have Palm Coast Little League. Um, so we are really trying to work with those organizations closely to support them. Um, I can tell you, we view that as public safety as well. Uh, the more that we can encourage, um, whether it be the arts, or whether it be music, or whether it be you know athletics uh, in our community, um, you know that drives a lot of that experience. Um, and so I think we're we're seeing it naturally. We're still affordable. Um, I think that helps with with a young professional family that's looking to relocate to a community. Geographically, we're positioned well between Orlando and Jacksonville, very close to international airports. Um, and so we, with our innovation district and with our new innovation director, uh, we, are, we are working on marketing strategies. Um, I think what our communication director, Michael Shotty, brings to the table, he's, he's a young professional, young professional group uh, uh, is part of that. And so I think you're going to see some more strategic strategies around that area. But we will always uh, support um, our, 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 our retirees as well. Um, and I think uh, they make up a lot of the heart of Palm Coast um, and we recognize that. I think also the, if I can just add the community center, this is something I'm just discovering, uh, is that you have so many different activities yes. inside as well as the playground outside too. That's so. true, yeah. yes. One of the things that I failed to mention is we've added another park in the city of Benel, the south side, and it's a, a children's park uh, for the little ones, and that was funded by a FERDAP grant of $50,000. We had a ribbon cutting last September, and we tried to find family members for the Lewis L. Jackson family, and we were struggling to do that. And Lo and behold, here about a month ago, somebody contacted me from Jacksonville that was a granddaughter from Lewis L. Jackson and wanted to come down and visit the park. So we made arrangements for a day when she told me we'd, she would come at Thursday at noon, and 20 of them showed up that were family members from Mr. Jackson. They were having a family reunion, and it was the 100th anniversary of their family reunion, and they were honoring their father, grandfather, and so we had a wonderful time talking about the development of that park and having the family come. So it was a very nice day and they were very appreciative and it was a wonderful experience. But we do have another park. I made it sound like uh, we don't do anything. <laughs> we, we are connected at the hip, like I said, to Flagler Beach. So most all the activities of the residents of Beverly Beach go to Flagler Beach, Friday in the park, uh, 4th of July, or the, which I would mention that the town of Beverly Beach took first place in the parade right. on the 4th of July. Uh -huh. in the, in the park. <laughs> they had 13 golf carts, right? That they were representing the 13 original colonies. We are active over there. You have an association of 220 homes that has activities going on all the time. Uh, like I said, we go to, we love to go over there when you got the rodeo going, okay? So we, we travel over to Palm Coast and use their facilities too, okay? Listen, I'm moving to Beverly Beach after this. <laughs> <laughs> all right, um, this is for you, Mayor Robinson. Where is the city with water quality within the city? 
Um, our water quality is very good. It's uh, excellent. We have a new water plant and we upgraded and it was state of the art when we built it and now we're looking on trying to fund for the wastewater side and trying to reduce the overage of water that goes into our system contaminated by the rain and, and that kind of thing. But our water quality is excellent. Um, okay. Our, this is for Mayor Holland. Are there any plans in place to establish a retail area in the Matanzas Woods area? Um, well, obviously we have the new Matanzas Interchange, uh, which I, I might add was an extraordinary effort on behalf of the county that uh, really uh, took 10 years to do, but they spent uh, a good amount of money making sure that that was a secondary um, means of um, evacuation. And so uh, what, that, what that was built out of, now we have the opportunity to have some commercial over there. Uh, so Publix has approached us uh, to have a Publix housed over by the interchange. Um, I know that um, a racetrack uh, has an interest, so you'll have uh, fuel over there. Um, and uh, we have a brand new uh, ER going in for Advent Health, has a brand new um, ER we just uh, discussed as a council the other night. Uh, we're putting, uh, helping them put in a road over there for easier access. So it'll be a standalone facility and an ER and some doctor's offices with uh, some commercial real, real estate lo located over there. And that transitions perfectly into yes. the next question. Okay. <laughs> um, with the Advent Health, um, ER, that is the trauma center, correct? Uh, we do not have a trauma center. Um, I, I, Halifax Health is our closest trauma center. Are, you, are there any plans for a trauma center? Um, not that I'm aware of. I will say that um, Advent Health is, is much more focused on orthopedics. Um, I don't know if you know this or not, but Advent Health um, actually does ankle replacement uh, uh, procedures right here in Palm Coast. Uh, it's, it's very advanced. Uh, you don't hear a lot of ankle replacements, so it, it is a center um, that they know. Uh, we do, going back to the active retirees, uh, they know they have sort of a built-in clientele that um, utilizes their services often uh, as far as the orthopedic side goes. But um, we have not uh, had any discussions with them as far as a, a trauma center, but they are expanding their facility where they're currently located. Um, they just uh, are, uh, have gotten the approval to do that, and like I said, opening up a secondary ER and standalone facility in the northern part of our city. Awesome. Thank yes. you so much. Yes. Okay. Oh, my goodness. All right. <laughs> this is for everybody. Does your city um, or the county have a written policy for handling the homeless population? <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, I, I will. I will start. Um, we oh, do well, not. Can I repeat it really quick? Yes. Okay. Um, does the city, does your city or county have a written policy for handling the homeless population? So we do not. Um, you know, I, I will tell you. Um, uh, when I was a county commissioner, one of the things that we really tried to focus on uh, was being a support system, also for our municipalities, and having sort of that one area. Um, of focus. So they, you know, the county does have a very um, a good social service program that offers a lot and tries to coordinate. What we have had discussions with, um, Council Member Howell has been appointed to the Public Safety Coordinating Council um, to come up with a unified approach, um, you know, for, you know, really approaching um, the, the homeless population that we have. Um, I am not, you know, in favor of saying we just need to relocate them to another community, but rather really understand the challenges that they face, um, working with different service providers um, and, and ensuring that, you know, we're, we're focusing not only on mental health issues, but, you know, drug and alcohol related issues. Um, we, we need to have a real conversation on what those services are, um, and, you know, how we can grow those services in our community and offer to, uh, to those that are, that are struggling uh, with that. Um, and we need to do it with compassion. You know, um, I'm I, you know, under the mindset that, you know, you can't just lump one group of uh, individuals into one category and think that uh, everyone has the same challenges. So, 
So I'm, I'm looking forward to um, having discussions with the county. Um, again, our, our appointee is uh, Council Member Howell. Um, Jack has extensive background um, you know, in these areas uh, where he is looking forward to bringing back that unified approach. Anybody else? I don't believe we have a policy, no. After years of the businesses, <coughs> excuse me, in Benel, on US-1 that have had to deal with the homeless and panhandling and intimidation and threats, the city of Benel did um, some research to find what we could do to help protect the businesses. And uh, we looked at Daytona's policies and we looked at St. Augustine's policies and we have developed um, a panhandling policy um, to help the businesses in Benel to be able to survive and thrive and grow without intimidation. Okay, can you explain what the policy is? What is the policy? <laughs> well, the policy um, is interesting in that if they are panhandling, I think the first offense is <clears throat> a warning and then the second offense is a $150 fine. And <laughs> guess who's gonna, yeah, who, 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 who is panhandling? going to have a $150 fine, and, but you got to start somewhere, and at least we have something that the um, police can use to be able to deal with the, the long-term long problems. Um, this is a very difficult issue. It is not easy, and um, there are a lot of facets with the homeless, as Melissa said. It's not all drug-related. It's not all alcohol-related. There are some folks who want help, and are getting help and there are folks who don't want help and so it's a fine balance between the citizens in Benel and the people who work in Benel and those who want to live in Benel and not be told what to do and not be told where they live but need someone to help support them. So we at least have a policy and um, it was it's not harsh obviously we're not looking to be harsh with the homeless we're looking to find better ways to work with the homeless. Um, many years ago, I went to Washington on a visit and asked Congressman Micah, what can I do to help the homeless in our city? And he said to me, this problem is bigger than Manel and it needs to be a countywide solution mm -hmm. to a, um, a, a whole country problem. And as you know, it's gotten worse. So um, I'm not just satisfied to say that we need to move them, we need to bust them, we need to send them to Daytona. I really do want to feel what we can do to find out. I think part of what we need to do is to find some data about what their story is and why they are where they are so that we can start working on trying to help fill those needs. I see that point um, Yes, on our meeting tonight, we are discussing a ordinance about panhandling, but it's aggressive panhandling. And what's happened is one of our commissioners came to us and said, it's not people standing there asking for money. It's people that are following people, threatening, threatening people, not giving up. And our police have no way to handle it. So we are looking at an ordinance this evening. It'll be first reading if it passes. Um, the homeless situation, it's a county problem. It's You can't dump it on Bunnell, Palm Coast, Flagler Beach, Beverly Beach, <laughs> Marine Land. Um, and we as a county need to sit down together and look at this. And like Mayor Robinson said, how many are drug-related, mental health issues? How many are just families that are living paycheck to paycheck and might just need a hand up? So we do need to work together, and hopefully we will soon, to figure out what we should do about this. One of the silver linings <clears throat> that's come out of some of the issues that the Bunnells had to deal with in the last couple of months is that now the homeless issue is being acknowledged throughout Polk County and that there is a problem here. For years that was not acknowledged. Um, but the aggressiveness is uh, threatening to some degree and um, intimidating. When you stop at the stop sign and you go through the Bank of America ATM and at the stop sign they come out of the woods and beat on your window and demand that you give them money that you just took out of the bank and that's happened more than once and I know this to be true I know the two people that told me this and others that have talked about it. I can give you horror stories. Um, so, you know, this is a real problem. 
where it's a safety issue and it's a great concern to the people who live in Bunnell and pay taxes in Bunnell. We do not have homeless in Beverly Beach. <laughs> <laughs> don't have children, don't have homeless. We're going to bring them there. I'm telling you, I'm moving around to the beach. If we see someone entering the town that looks like they would like to plant themselves at the curb or whatever, it's simple enough for us to walk them from one end to the other. Or golf cart them. We can golf cart them too. Or we can golf cart them. But there, the, the mayors are very concerned about it. We talked about it yesterday. The homeless situation in this country is deplorable. And it's, what's the answer? Is there an answer? I sometimes doubt that there is a solution. Why did this all come about? Why is it happening? Well, we know back at a certain time, some years back, that all the state mental institutions emptied out because the federal government did not want to give them the money to run. Right. We know that the drug epidemic is overwhelming to every community, mm -hmm. and that drugs have taken hold of people's lives, and they would sleep on the street, and go panhandle and do their thing to get their money, steal, whatever. But what is the solution? Nobody seems to know the real solution. We can say whatever we want, what are we going to do? Are we going to build them housing? Are we going to you know, we try to find them jobs? Whatever it is, it just does not seem to be an answer to this thing. And that's what bothers me more than anything. We were talking about it yesterday. I asked the mayors, what's the solution? And we sat there and we look at each other like, we really don't know the solution. And it's drugs, alcohol, mental illness. I can tell you stories from when I was in the military. We, had, we lived next to a mental institution. But it was all outpatient. I, I, I use the word mental institution. I shouldn't say that. These are people that have problems, no problems. But... It's going to take everybody working together trying to find a solution. If I wanted to build a homeless building next to your house, are you going to allow that? No. No. Right? So, there's got to be some people maybe smarter than me that are up there that can figure out solutions to this. I don't know what it is. Um, in, in terms of the answer to the specific question, no, the county doesn't have a, a, a written uh, plan uh, to deal with homelessness. Uh, and I'm not going to reiterate all the things that everybody else already said. Um, probably the closest answer that, that I would give would be uh, pretty much all the things that, uh, that Mayor Holland had to say because she was a commissioner and she kind of approached it from, from that angle. Uh, yes, the county is the primary deliverer of social services. Um, in the county, uh, we're going to continue to do that. One of the a couple of things that I think we need to be better at is is understanding the data, because I, I don't know that you can really uh, form solutions unless you really know what you're dealing with. I don't I don't believe um, I don't believe uh, the, these point in time counts. Uh, I think that from what I from what I've been able to research, they could be off as much as forty percent plus or minus. So if you don't know uh, exactly what you're dealing with. I don't know how you can come up with, with all the solutions. And, and one example I would give of that is um, you take the, the issue of veterans. Um, there should There's no excuse. There should never be ever anywhere a homeless veteran anywhere in the United States. Because, and not, not, not to, and, and I'm not saying that as a political throwaway, throwaway line. What I'm saying is that there are lots of services for veterans. And there's everybody in this room would help a veteran. You, you would probably help a homeless person, but you also identify with veterans. And uh, there's, there's tons of dollars and services available for veterans. So if we know, if we have good data and we know, uh, you know if there are any homeless veterans, we can take care of this. That's low-hanging fruit. Um, and, and so I think we need to be better at, at understanding the data and understanding where the homeless are, homeless are where, you know, how they flow in and out of homelessness, because that happens a lot. Uh, so that we can design services to 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 help them. Uh, and the last thing I'll say is that with our with our new administrator, um, you know, one of the areas that he uh, was was in his uh, responsibilities up in St. Johns County was dealing with the homelessness problem. So I look forward to him 
working on that in cooperation with our municipalities going forward. Thank you all. I, I definitely will look forward to seeing the data that we do discover through that and also uh, addressing it with compassion because I think that is very, very important as we've done a lot of work with the homeless students in Flagler County as well. So naturally we'll transition into um, tiny homes. So we have a question about tiny homes and uh, if we have any kind of plan for that or anyone has the infrastructure putting together their communities on that, or? You know, I mean, I'm... <laughs> um, you know, I can tell you, uh, Toby Tobin, uh, many of you may know, um, does a lot um, uh, on talking about that on his radio show, about the smaller footprint homes and how that's sort of the trend where um, uh, some communities are taking advantage of that type of experience. We have not had an applicant uh, come before us, um, uh, you know, certainly in the three years I've been mayor, um, to uh, apply for that. It would obviously have to be a rezoning. Um, a Pump Coast is, if you think about this, you know, we're a young city. We're incorporated in 1999. It was master planned by IT&T. Um, and, and the, you know, we, we inherited a lot of, of the infrastructure that they put in place many years ago when they divested their interest and we became a city. Um, and so, obviously, the technical aspect of that would be going through, you know, a process if an applicant so desired um, to have a tiny home community on the plot of land that they own. Um, again, I think a lot of that could be also market-driven. Um, you know, it, 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 a developer or builder is not going to do something that is not going to be a, a revenue generator for them. So I've not seen the data or the modeling or anything else. I've had discussions with Toby Tobin in regards to it. Um, I know he thinks it's a good idea for some of our infill development areas, um, but it just has not been approached. Not in Pump Coast. Yeah, not Black or Beach either. There was a meeting where there was some discussion about tiny homes and what we thought about that and learning a little bit about it, but there's not been anybody that's actually put uh, feet to the words and, and done anything about it. So it is pretty fascinating, though, when you think about these minimalists out there, they're live in living in a 200 square foot <laughs> place. And I'm just like, Whoa. Too much of a hoarder. <laughs> <laughs> I've watched it on TV. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm moving to the Beach. You're be your best friend. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think that this question, this question is directed towards um, Commissioner O'Brien. However, I do believe that uh, Mayor Holland addressed something that can help with this, and it's um, the county has many unpaved streets, some of which. Are currently maintained. Maintained is there a program to address this? And I just think that is that a place where people can go if it's in Palm Coast to Palm Coast Connect and post. Yep. Okay. Uh, I mean, I can address our street maintenance program. Mm -hmm. Or if you wanted to first, I mean, we we don't. Sorry. You know, I, Palm Coast doesn't have any unpaved streets, um, but we do have a street maintenance program. I will tell you, it's very much underfunded. Um, historically, uh, the council had adopted utilizing the sales tax dollars. Um, I don't know what year that occurred, but they, they agreed to take the sales tax dollars and apply 50 miles of roads um, per year of maintaining. Uh, again, Palm Coast is a very large city, landmass-wise. We're 89 square miles. If you think about um, the many thousands of miles of roads that we have to maintain that we inherited from it and it's very expensive. Uh, how much do you think it costs to um, maintain a mile of road? It's a million dollars. So think about that for a minute. So a lot of it has to go into planning. So what we have done is looked at uh, resurfacing material. Uh, we have brought in a consultant to identify different roads in different areas, but to your point, Palm Coast Connect, um, the reason why they advanced the, pump, uh, the uh, maintenance of roads, because they refer to, I think, one of the council members as the pothole mayor, the pothole council member, um, because their area was really in disrepair. Their roads were really in disrepair. So um, it was a decision, um, but certainly it's very helpful if you do live on a street, 
that you feel does need attention, log into Punkos Connect. We'll have our public works uh, team go out there, assess the situation. That helps us with more and more information and data. Commissioner O'Brien, do you have anything to add? Um, I, I know one of the challenges that we've had on, on the west side of the county is on, on those roads where we, we do an assessment, we haven't changed that assessment for many, many, many years uh, because there's a lot of resistance to doing that. So I think that that is somewhat of a challenge because there's, there's not enough revenue there to, to do some of that. And, and I don't know that it's fair to be charging a prop, I, you know, to charge a Palm Coast property owner to, to grade some county roads out on the west side. Not, you know, so I think that there's some of that challenge there. Uh, there is a regular plan for maintenance on the roads. Uh, if there's an individual situation uh, of, of something that somebody's referring to, you know, please get with me, and I'll be glad to make sure we get the resources out there to, you know, to work on. Great, thank you. All right, and the last question, <coughs> very important question: <laughs> Are we getting a Costco? <laughs> That's a real question. That is a real question. Um, well, serving on the Economic Opportunity Advisory Council, um, I don't know of that happening. I think, if I remember, I thought I heard some st some numbers to the tune of that Costco needs about a million people within a certain radius in order for them to build a store and we're not anywhere in that yeah. in that uh, ballpark is, unless anybody wants to say different about that. I'll Going just, to Beverly Beach? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you already got me sold, but if you get a Costco. <laughs> I, I like Costco hot dogs. <laughs> We have the property. <laughs> Bring it on. Um, I, I would just say to uh, Chairman O'Brien's point, uh, we have looked at that. We have engaged um, some of uh, those different shopping opportunities. Um, again, it's market driven. A lot of it goes into data with population models, spending habits. The more we shop local, I will say that drives some of those decisions when retail is looking at coming here. Um, and so that also drives that discussion. Uh, we have a census count coming up. Um, I, I know also with more shopping opportunities, uh, that population, uh, you know, I always said when we did the last census count 10 years ago, if we can get to that $100,000 or 100,000 population, um, a lot of those commercial retailers will start putting us on the map and start looking at engaging with us. So um, I have reached out personally to Trader Joe's um, just because I think that would be a great experience for our residents. Um, we are finally getting a Wawa, um, and so that's going in over on Bulldog Drive. Um, that, they, they just pulled their permit the other day, so it's super exciting. Um, and so, you know, again, those shopping experiences go back to something that's really important. The more we can build out uh, in our downtown area, I think those will follow suit. We, we do have some residential going um, vertical in our downtown. That will drive some of that retail discussion as well. Yay, well yes. lost up. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, and we're going to close out now. That completes our Q&A session. If your question was not answered, we have a whole stack of them. So uh, forgive us. I'm kind of ran out. Um, that will be given to the appropriate parties and your client, if you put your email on there, your question will be answered via email. Um, and as we go through our, our closing, I would like to just add another question that we have and you can add whatever you'd like to it. And what new developments are coming to the county or the city while you send your closing message? If you don't have any, just give a closing message. Yeah, no, uh, my closing message would be Thank you so much for the opportunity to, uh, to be here this morning. Uh, this was, was a really informative event. I learned a lot about some other things going on uh, around the county. Uh, I, I, it's an honor to serve all of you as uh, one of your county commissioners. And um, if there's anything, anything that wasn't addressed and you want to get with me offline, please do so. And thank you so much for, for having me this morning. I would like to say that we all should be very fortunate and be blessed for where we live in this county. That's right. 
This is a paradise area. And I think we all fight to keep it a paradise. I would like to say that there are four lady mayors. And the four lady mayors are pretty and they're intelligent. And I was jokingly asked this morning, do I wear makeup? No, I asked if you wore your makeup for our picture. Oh, okay. You know, I appreciate what you do in our community because you are the lifeblood of what goes on in Flagler County. And our Flagler County is very diverse. And that's the beauty of living here. We've got the beaches, we've got the woods, we've got the parks. We have the downtown center that has wonderful shopping. And buying local is very important for all of us to do that, whether local is downtown Bonnell or local is Flagler Beach or Palm Coast. Um, one of the things that I didn't mention is that we have the Coquina City Hall and the Bonnell Water Tower has been put on the National Historic Buildings Registry. Yes. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, I love living here. I love working with the mayors. And if you have any additional questions that did not get answered, I'll be happy to address them. And thank you for the invite. Yes, thank you for being here today. Um, Flagler Beach doesn't really have any big development coming. Um, the gardens is not in Flagler Beach. I'll repeat that again. The gardens development that's being proposed is not in the city of Flagler Beach. So <laughs> it is right next to the city of Flagler Beach, but it's not in the city of Flagler Beach. So for those who have reached out to us to vote against it, we don't get a say in this. Um, you would need to speak to the, the one that left. <laughs> But yes, there is development going on all around us, and that's the thing I don't think people realize. I mean, everybody talks about the gardens, but if you go look at Colbert, there's some things coming along the way. And, um, you know, for those of us who have lived here a long time, the county is changing, and, you know, it's for the better, but sometimes you go, wait, close the bridge. Where's all these people coming from? <laughs> So um, we do have a great county. We have so much to offer. I mean, it should be fairly easy to sell to people. You've got, you know, the cities, you've got the beaches, you've got Bunnell. So there is something for everybody. But thank you guys so much for coming out this morning and having us. Um, I had mentioned uh, the new um, uh, management team, Douglas Development. Um, Palm Coast Park, which is um, a northern part of our city, um, Lead Energy also owns that. Um, very large track of land. I think Jeff Douglas told me yesterday that he has sold about 80% of that. Um, so that will be a lot of residential and some commercial growth um, with that. Uh, Colbert Lane um, is, is a county uh, row, but it's it's in our city. Uh, we are seeing some development along Colbert. I, I mentioned our town center. Uh, we do have apartments uh, that are going vertical when you go into Bulldog Drive to our city hall. Um, so we do have some um, housing options coming online, uh, which is a good thing uh, when we talk about different needs of our community. Um, and, you know, we still have, I think, 11,000 buildable lots from the old ITT uh, areas and sections. So uh, we, we do have an upswing of building permits. Again, we're trying to make that experience much better than we have uh, historically. Um, and we're trying to make it um, more efficient um, and expedite those. So, you know, we always say that, you know, we have to balance our growth because there is an additional level of cost of services when uh, we do have more residents that come online. Um, and, and, you know, those services are expensive. Uh, like I said, um, there, there's a lot that goes into running a government and a lot that goes into running a full service city. So. Um, you will you will hear a lot more uh, going back to that Palm Coast Connect. The great part about it is when you sign up and you, and you do report a case or log a case, a survey will be given to you. So we want to hear what your experience was like. Um, we'll be able to derive that data as well on, on areas we can improve. If your experience wasn't uh, what you expected it to be, we want to hear from you as well. Um, we really want to become a citizen-centric 
um, city, uh, one that's based off of uh, engaging our community as much as possible. Uh, so we are building a, a city of the future. We're excited about everything that's going on in Palm Coast. I love working with every single person that sits up here. Uh, it's been a great experience in my three years as mayor, uh, and I look forward to uh, more great things to come. Thank you. Thank you all so much. And I think it is, it's a true testament to our area we live in that you could be out picking potatoes or some cabbage uh, and banal and come through Palm Coast, head to the beach, up through Beverly Beach, get a hot dog and have a golf cart ride in Beverly Beach, and see dolphins in marine land by the end of the day. So we do truly live in an amazing community, and I have been side by side with many of the people up here, uh, working hard, picking up garbage at races, out in the hot heat, sweating, volunteering at um, habitat builds with all of these people. So I also think that it's a true testament to your leadership skills. So thank you all so much for everything you do for our community. And we are excited to see where we go in the future. Yeah. Thank you again, everybody, for coming. I'm Megan Farrell, the president, and I'm glad to see everyone here. And have an awesome Thursday. <laughs>